By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we have reached part number two of our two-part series of EDH 9394 Color Wars or Color Clash, however you want to call it. If you haven't seen part number one, take a moment, visit part number one first. There's an info card popping up right now. Go there before you check out this second part. If you've seen part one, that means you're ready for part number two. Enjoy the madness. Welcome back to The Madness. So this is part number two of the two-part series, EDH Color Wars. And uh, we're now looking at Marco's turn. And Marco is about to attack with his Gaius Avenger, but Ishan is stopping that with his Icy Manipulator, tapping the Gaius Avenger down. And the Gaius Avenger actually has a Spirit Shackles on it. So every time it gets tapped, it gets minus O, minus two. So that is a pretty big deal. And Marco also has an Angry Mob there, which is now a 5-5. Five -five. A living wall and just a lot of pretty good artifacts and of course that uh, land tax that it has been his since turn one so i wonder what marco is going to do right now with his angry mob is he going to attack with it and if so who is he going to attack i'm afraid i'm a pretty good target i think also ishan could be a good target so here we see him using his icy manipulator on my gaze adventure because i played a clone earlier on the gaze adventure mine is an 8 8 and um, yeah, that doesn't promise a lot of good things. I'm afraid Marco is probably going to attack me then with his angry mob. So that would mean five points of damage. There's the 5-5 five, five turning sideways coming at me. And I have to say, Marco has been kind of in the lead since the start. I cannot really complain that much because I've been drawing into a lot of books, as you can see. Jam Day Tome, Book of Wrath, also the Ring of Renewal. So I've had a lot of options to draw cards, but here I'm dropping five points. I'm going to 19, which is actually the lowest on the table. I think I've used that Book of Wrath a little bit too aggressively. And I wonder what I can do next turn. And also Ishan has a Power Leech, by the way, which is a super good card from Antiquities. Every time an artifact gets tapped or activated, Ishan actually gains a life. So it's going to be really tough to kill Ishan. It's going to be really tough to kill Marco. I mean, it's looking pretty rough. And look at this. Marco is even getting better playing Atonis' Coffin. That is huge. Of course, the mono artifact from Antiquities, you can pay three and tap it. And then you can put a creature in the coffin and it's out of play. So I'm tapping that coffin now with my Relic Barrier. I probably wanted to tap down the... Um, uh, to tap down the uh, the living wall instead, and of course my uh, my Avenger got a little stronger with that Tonus' coffin, so it's now a nine nine. And I guess he's just going to pass turn here. That's what I expect him to do at least. And yeah, that's what he's going to do. So I'm going to untap here everything I have. So. I mean, I still have a Jam Day Tome. It's kind of hard to see how many cards I have in hand. I do have that dice there, but five cards? Wow, that is a lot. That makes it difficult for me to actually use my Ring of Renewal. I also have an Apprentice Wizard, so I actually have tons of mana and a lot of cards, so I'm, I should be able to kind of swing this game around. Ooh, there's a Pirate Ship. That is actually pretty good. It's 4-3, and I can tap it to deal one damage to any target. Unfortunately... Pirate Ship's got Island Home, which means it cannot attack any player unless they own an island. And as and when I actually lose all my islands, when there are no islands in play on my side, the Pirate Ship sinks. It destroys itself. Now, we did decide not to play with Color Hoser, so I don't have to worry about a Tsunami. I'm also not playing, for example, an Acid Rain. We thought it would just be more fun this way. So I don't have to be afraid of that. Let's take a look. What else can I do? Four cards in hand now. And that Rally Barry, and I'm just passing turn here to Chris. I think I think I'm gonna play pretty defensively. I mean, I'm I'm on the lowest life total. And ooh, there Chris is playing. Oh, I forgot the name, but it's his troll as well. It's a one-two throw. He can sacrifice it for two black mana. And I mean, Chris has been low on lands the entire game. I mean, this must be so frustrating for him. And um, yeah, he just has to wait until he finds some more land from the top of his library. And he's passing turn to Ishan now, it seems, who's tapping six. Ooh, playing a Tetravus. So that's a 4-4 four, four flying creature. It's actually a 1-1 one, one flyer, but it comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. Here we see an attack by Ishan, and he's attacking Chris. 
And there's actually an order of the ebb and hand that Ishan is there on his side of the table. Marco played a gauntlet of chaos earlier and he traded his um, his order of the ebb and hand for the uh, Gaius Avenger of Ishan. Yeah, it's kind of difficult, but a lot of stuff has happened already. <laughs> and I think that Ishan is now slowly trying to kill Marco's Avenger. And Marco's Avenger only has four toughness left. So if Ishan can tap it twice, it's actually going to die. And there we see Marco playing a soul ring. And that means that my Gaius Avenger is getting a little bit bigger, which is good. But Marco has so much. Like, if he wants to, he can really, really make it difficult for me with the Taunus' Coffin and with the Icy Manipulator. So, the question really is, who is Marco going to attack? And if he wants to declare attacks, is Ishan going to respond by tapping down his Avenger? Uh, I mean, his toughness is pretty low. I thought it was four, but now looking at that blue dice again, it's hard to see. I think it says six. So, if Marco taps his Avenger again, it's going to go down to four. But again, I wonder who he's going to attack. It looks like he's... Is he getting a dice, maybe? I did this before in the game to kind of decide who I wanted to attack. Where I would go 1-2 for that, 3-4 for that, 5-6 for that. I think 1-2 is Ishan, 3-4 is me, and 5-6 is Chris. Look at that, a 6. So he is going to attack Chris. I mean, I, I'm expecting Chris to just throw one of his creatures in front of the bus here. Remember, the Avenger does not have a uh, trample. It is really big, though. Again, it's hard to see. I believe it's like 10 or something. I think it's 10. I think it's a 10-4 now after attacking. So he's attacking Chris. And I'm pretty sure Chris is going to throw one of the creatures in front of the bus. Going to put the Kumbach Witches as in front of the bus to chum block here. That makes absolute sense. But what is Ishan doing there? What is he going to do? Oh, oh a Berserk! That is huge. That means the power of the Gaius Avenger is going to double to 20 and it gets trample. Remember, the Goombach Witches has three toughness. That means 17 points of damage for Chris, who's on 25. That would mean he would go all the way down to eight. That would be devastating for Chris. Let's take a look what's actually going to happen here. Does Chris have any way to respond? No, he doesn't. He's just going to take the damage. He's going to drop. Okay, I guess I made a mistake. He's going to drop to 8. Because he's gaining a life from the soul net. Okay, so he went to 7 and then back up to 8. Because of his Kumbach Witches. But this is huge. And Marco, of course, losing his Gaius Avenger. And that means it goes back to the command zone of Ishan. So Ishan can recast it again next turn. It's actually the first time that it has died. So this is huge. Great news for me, though. I mean, I'm just looking at this. I'm seeing Ishan using a pretty good card to deal 17 damage to Chris, and I see Marco losing one of his best creatures. His best creature, actually. So this is good news, because he was attacking me earlier with it. And now I'm untapping five cards, well, six cards in hand. Now, after the draw, I've got my Jam Day Tome. I've got, you know, I've got my Gaius Adventure still, the cloned version. So I'm feeling pretty good at this point. And I can start pinging, of course, with my pirate ship as well. It still had summoning sickness, but now it doesn't anymore. So Chris is, of course, putting away his spirit shackles because the Gaius Avenger died. And uh, wow, this was huge. All of a sudden, Chris is on eight. Ooh, playing a Timmy. Now I can play the Tim because the Kumbach Witches are gone. So this is the moment for me to play my Tim. And of course, I'm going to draw a card. I am giving life again to Ishan, tapping two artifacts. I hope, Ishan, you're keeping track of this. That Power Leech is just very, very strong. And uh, it looks like I'm discussing a couple of things. I've got six cards in hand right now. And I'm just passing the turn. I wonder what those cards are. And look at that. Chris is untapping his Bottomless Vault. So Bottomless Vault is a storage land from Fallen Empires. If you keep it tapped, you actually can put another storage counter on it. He's not doing it. He's tapping four mana for a Dancing Scimitar. He needs to put some blockers in place. I completely understand. He's so low at the moment. And I'm sure he's really, really worried about my pirate ship. Now, my, my thinking here is if I start killing Chris, I'm not really helping myself. Chris is not a threat at the moment. I'm looking really looking at Marco and I'm, I'm looking at Ishan also a little bit. But mainly at Marco, I just think, you know, that Icy Manipulator, the, the Tannis' Coffin, the Rocket Launcher still, it's just a lot of threats there to Gem Day Tome. 
But let's first see what Ishan can do. So he's recasting his Gaius Avenger. So that, that makes him a bigger threat, actually. And of course, Ishan also still has to Tetravus, which is a 4-4. Four -four. I'm not quite sure why there are no counters on it yet. And right now we're counting how big the Gaius Avenger is on the side of Ishan. Um, there are so many artifacts on the side of Marco. He's got 2, 4, 6, 7 artifacts. I've got 8, 9, 10, 11 artifacts in total, 12 artifacts in total. And then Chris has 2, so 14. So it's going to be, I believe, a 15, 15. Maybe even bigger, maybe a 16, 16. This is, the, I mean, the Gaius Avenger is a lot of fun to play with, but you're constantly counting again and probably we're counting wrong all the time. Oh, uh, it's a 15-15, so it's huge. And the fact that Ishan can combine that with that Icy Manipulator really gives me a bad feeling, because he can like he can tap down my Avenger and he can just attack, and I will have to chum block. That is bad news. And there we see an attack from Ishan with the Tetravest. Remember, it is still a 4-4. No, he's untapping it again, changing his mind. No, tapping it again. Not quite sure who he's attacking. I believe he is attacking Marco here. Marco could, of course, put it in the box, but he doesn't want to put it in the Taunt's coffin because then when it comes out, it actually gets bigger. Now we, we see some counters being put on there by Ishan, so that kind of helps. So it is a 4-4. I mean, Marco's still on 30. You can just take the 4 damage. It's not a big deal. I think the Living Wall on the side of Marco has done fa a fantastic job. Because it's, it's kept him out of harm's way until now. I mean, this is the first time he's taken damage. That's insane. So he's going to drop to 26. I mean, that's just crazy. We've been playing forever and this is the first damage. But I do think that through the air is the best way to kind of reach Marco. I am playing with, uh, with some flying creatures in my deck, by the way. I'm playing with Tetravis as well. I'm playing with Clockwork Avian. I'm playing with Air Elemental. I'm playing with Mahamoti Jin. And there we see Marco using the coffin. What is he going to put? Oh, he's going to put the Gaius Avenger into the coffin. Oh, this is tough for Ishan. Like he just got it back. And you can really see that Ishan and Marco are kind of starting to battle with each other here, which is again, good news for me and Chris. We're just being really quiet. <laughs> I think I'm just going to try to ping them to death. That's just my plan. I just have no better plan. And this is good news for me as well, because now Marco's Tonus' coffin is occupied, which is good news, of course, for my gay as Avenger. And Ishan still gaining life, of course, through his power leech every time an artifact gets activated. Angry Mob still being a 5-5 trampler. I wonder who he's going to attack. He is looking around the table now. I mean, the thing is with combat, by the way, is that Ishan has to decide to use his Icy Manipulator before attackers are declared. So that's kind of tough. Marco here tapping the Dancing Scimitar. Is he going to attack Chris here? That would be pretty brutal since Chris is already really low. So I guess Marco thinks, you know what? I'm going to just finish Chris off. And in all honesty, I kind of understand it, but I'm not sure if it's the best interest for Marco. So he's actually going to tap with his throw. I, I guess it's called a basal throw, but it could be wrong. It's a 1-2, so it soaks up two points of damage, meaning Chris still takes three points. So he's going to drop to five. And unfortunately, because Chris has this huge mana issue, he just doesn't have enough mana open to use his soul net. So that is very unfortunate. And I'm using my Relic Barrier here to tap down the Icy Manipulator of Ishan. And Ishan is using it to tap down the Living Wall. Okay, so Ishan is kind of telling me that I should attack. And look at that, I'm now using my Ring of Renewal, by the way, for the first time. That means I have to discard a card to draw two cards. Do I only have like lands and other cards? I just don't need in my hand, I wonder. But anyway, I am tapping down the Icy of Ishan. And in response, Ishan has tapped down the Living Wall, kind of telling me, you know what, you can attack Marco next time. Discarding a land, by the way, off of my Ring of Renewal, drawing two fresh cards, and now, of course, a third card, meaning I've got, I don't know, nine cards in hand or something. It's insane. Playing an Island of Vakvak, Vak, which is pretty good. It means I don't have to worry about flyers anymore, so that is pretty nice. I mean, I could, of course, use my Gaia's Avenger and just attack Marco. I think that would be a good plan. 
You know, maybe maybe Marco won't be happy with me and use his rocket launcher on my Timmy. I am going to use my Timmy to kill the Order of Lightbur. Wow. Am I going to attack Ishan here? I mean, it makes sense. Ishan has the highest life total. Looks like I am attacking with my Gaius Avenger and with my Grape Shot Catapult. So look at that. Ishan taking a ton of damage. And I guess I'm attacking Marco with my Grape Shot Catapult. So I'm dealing two points of damage here to Marco. And I'm, I'm dealing, I think, 12 points of damage to Ishan. Look at him go. He's dropping. I mean, he's still pretty high, though. He's on 24. But he is taking some significant points of damage. Playing a reconstruction. What am I going to reconstruct? Oh, I'm bringing back my Clockwork Beast. Why not? I mean, it's such a cool card. In all honesty, I have to admit something. I've only played Clockwork Beast in these types of games. But it is. Yeah, it's such a beautiful card. Beautiful art by Drew Tucker. And of course, it comes in as a 7-4. And I'm also really happy to play my uh, Reconstruction. Because it's my only Summer Magic card that I own. So it's super cool to kind of cast it. And get back another iconic card in the form of Clockwork Beast. And now I'm passing turn. I'm not sure if my I aggressive line of play is the best one, by the way. Because, you know, I, I, I'm pretty low on life. I'm on 19. And I've also tapped down my Relic Berry. So I'm definitely taking a risk. I've passed a turn, by the way, to Chris. And I think Chris had to discard Howl from Beyond. I just feel really bad for Chris. The entire game... He hasn't really been able to do anything. And now he's also the lowest in life totals. I mean, at a certain point, of course, the rest of the table has to decide to kind of, you know, also start attacking uh, the player that just, you know, isn't going anywhere. But his deck, of course, can do much, much more than we are seeing at the moment. But now it's Ishan's turn. And his, I mean, his deck is doing stuff. If you're Ishan, you want to get rid of Tatanus' coffin so he can get his Gaius adventure back. That's kind of the goal of Ishan here. Looking around the table, he's tapping three green here. Playing an Ice Storm. Ooh, that is bad. My Island of Wak Wak. Okay, I guess I deserve that, Ishan, after attacking you with the Gaius Avenger. I get it, but I'm not happy with it. Does that mean I'm going to take four points of damage from the Tetravis? I really shouldn't have, like, opened up like this. This is a bad decision. Being on 19, he could drop me back to 15. I'm really low. Remember, I mean, Ishan is playing with a lot of hurricane effects, including her the card Hurricane itself. And with that, check that storage land that he has there with 12 storage counters. I believe Ishan is attacking me here for four. That means I'm going to drop to 15. Or is he? Yeah, he's going to attack me. I'm on 15. I don't have any life gain in my deck. I should have played with, like, uh, Fountain of Youth. Actually, I do have some life gain. I play with Solnet. And I think I play with Urza's Chalice to gain some life from artifacts. So maybe you should have played with that. But anyway, Ishan gaining life again from all the tapped artifacts. Oh, man. And look at that. Marco untapping the Tannis' Coffin. That means Ishan's uh, Gaia's Adventure is coming back into play. That is so interesting. I wonder what Marco is going to do. He also has an Icy Manipulator still. I mean, if Marco wants to hurt me, he can actually. He can tap down my Clockwork Beast, attack me with his Angry Mob. And, you know, maybe I would have to Charm Block or something. It would put me in a very difficult position because I'm only on 15. He's going to use the Icy Manipulator here. What is he tapping down, though? We see Ishan, of course, gaining a life from the tap. I'm not quite sure what he has tapped down with the Icy Manipulator at the moment. Okay, so he's tapped down the Icy Manipulator of Mark of Ishan, and Ishan is responding, tapping down his Living Wall. There we see an attack, 5-5, five, five, going to Ishan. I mean, I think Marco is now kind of seeing, wait a minute, Ishan is tanking so much life from the Power Leech, I have to put some pressure on it. The problem, of course, is that Ishan gains a life every time we tap an artifact. Right now, Marco is using... Oh, interesting. Why is he doing this? He's putting his angry mop in the coffin. Does he have like a wrath of God or something? Balance, perhaps? Tapping four. 
There is a Wrath of God. Wow, this is going to change the game. This is going to have an impact on the board. And I'm going to lose a lot of creatures. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm playing a Power Sink. Wow, and I think I've got enough mana. Yes, I have. So playing a Power Sink, canceling this Wrath of God. And this is good news because it's kind of opening up um, you know, the board for me as well because Marco is kind of committed to this Wrath of God uh, by putting his Angry Mob in the coffin and also his Living Wall step down. So I can actually deal a lot of damage to him next turn. So Marco, of course, being forced to kind of tap down his lands. I don't think he has to tap the Mishra's Workshop, to be honest, but I could be wrong. And he's used the, yeah, he's used the Soul Ring to pay for the Wrath, so that makes sense that that is tapped. I wonder if I'm going to use my pirate ship on the end step of Marco. That's something that maybe I'm going to forget after all this. No, I am using it. I'm going to ping somebody for one. I'm going to ping Ishan for one. I'm sorry, Ishan, but you're just gaining so much life with the power leech. I kind of feel like I have to, I have to deal some damage to you, man. I hope you understand. You're still on 23. Chris is on five. Marco is on, wow, he's on 25. He's really high up. I could, of course, attack Marco here for 12 points of damage. That would be huge. And I can attack with my Clockwork. Let's see what I'm going to do here. So I'm tapping. I'm putting my creature sideways. Who am I going to attack here? I'm going to attack Marco, I believe, with my Gaia's Adventure and my Clockwork Beast towards Ishan. So I'm dealing 7 points of damage here to Ishan. So he's going to drop to 17 and I'm attacking Marco with the 12-12. So he's gonna take 12 points of damage. This is ideal. This is some serious stuff. So he's gonna drop to 13. That is fantastic. So now it looks like the game is slowly getting, getting towards my direction. It feels like I'm winning here and I'm playing a Mahamoti Chen, Papa Moti. Sorry, guys, I'm just getting really excited when I play Mom OT Jin. It's just such a beautiful card. Whenever I cast it, it puts a smile on my face. Some people like casting Ancestral Recall or whatnot. I just like casting this card. Ooh, what do we see on, on the side of Chris? It's hard to tell, but I believe it's an Armor Thrall. So that's a 1 3 creature. You can sack it to give a plus, put a plus 1 plus 2 counter on target creature. Anyway, it's now Ishan's turn. And he's untapped his storage land. Okay. Why does he want 12 green mana? This is making me nervous. Why would you do that, Ishan? Just pass the turn. Just pass the turn. You don't need to do anything. I think you're going to do something. <laughs> oh, look at that. He's taking off 10 mana. Aladdin's Lamp. That is hysterical. That card is so cool. You hardly ever see it. For people that don't know what it does, first off, casting cost of 10, right? Then X and tap, and the next time you would draw a card this turn, instead, look at the top X cards of your library, put all but one of them on the bottom of your library in a random order, then draw a card. X cannot be zero. So it's kind of a way to go through your deck and finding the cards you want, but it's super expensive. But it's hysterical though, and I guess Ishan's got enough mana to kind of use it and make it, make it useful. Is he going to use it straight away? I mean, I've hardly ever seen an Aladdin's Lamp in action in a game, so that would be quite fun. He is tapping three. Is he going to do that for the lamp? Oh, lure! A lure on his Chaos Avenger! Oh, man. Do not attack me, Ishan. I come in peace. He's attacking me. Newsflash. So he's got the lure on. Lure means I have to tap it with all my blockers. But, of course, in response to him attacking, I can kind of use my creatures for something else. So I'm, of course, going to ping Ishan for two here. I'm going to use my Sage of Latinam to sack my Grapeshot Catapult because I've got a Chum Block it anyway, so I at least get a card for it. But I think I'm going to lose my Mahamoti Jin. I think I'm also going to use my Jam Day Tome to try to find an answer to this problem. I don't think I'm playing Unsummon in this deck. I am playing a Boomerang. And yes, I got a block with my Mahamoti. That is unfortunate. I guess I'm kind of lucky in a way that Ishan didn't attack with his Tetravis as well, because then it would have taken 4 damage. And remember, I'm on 15. I'm quite low. I have to say, if we look at life totals, things are moving in this game, and I think that's a good thing. 
So we see Ishan being on 16, Marco being on 13, Chris on 5, and I'm on 15. So that means that Ishan still has the highest life total, of course, due to that power leash that has been in the game on his side forever. And Chris is still last with just those five tiny lives. But I don't think anybody really wants to kill him yet. So Chris is still in it. So maybe he can still have a moment where he can find the right cards and the right mana. But for now, we're just going to focus on the turn of Marco. So Marco's going to untap. He's probably going to untap his coffin exactly. So that means Angry Mob is coming back. So it's still a 5-5 five, five Trampler. But it is tapped because when a creature comes out of the coffin, it is tapped. And I think if you're Marco, you don't really mind the lure because you just have your, your living wall. So, I mean, the lure is really the worst for me. And, of course, for Chris, but I don't think he really... Well, Chris has some creatures, but I can lose a lot of creatures here. Ooh, there we see Marco playing his uh, commander here for the first time in the game. His Argivian Archaeologist. So, that's pretty sweet. What does he have in the bin there? Okay, so he's got Gauntlets of Chaos. I also like the um, Argivian Archaeologist in combination with the Rocket Launcher. And I think if you're Marco, you're kind of not happy with my pinger. So he could use his Thomas's coffin to put my pirate ship in the coffin and then use his rocket launcher to kill my uh, my Timmy. Actually, he's got enough mana probably to end kill my pirate ship and my Tim. I think, yeah, he does actually. So he could, if he wants to, he can do that with his rocket launcher. I mean, it would cost a lot of mana, yes. But the pingers are gone, and I think if I can untap with my pingers, I'm definitely going to kill the Archaeologist. And there we see Marco playing a Diamond Valley. Also a very good card, a card from Arabian Nights. You can tap it, sack a creature, gain life equal to its toughness. He's tapping four. What is he going to do here? Ooh, he's going to play a Nevenerals Disc. The famous disc, of course, it comes into play tap, but that means next turn he can blow everything up. I mean, this is looking pretty good for Marco. Also with the Archaeologist, I'm really liking the synergies here for him, for his deck. But I'm pretty sure I'm going to ping the Archaeologist down. Now remember, the Archaeologist pay two white and tap to take an artifact back from your graveyard. But it does have summoning sickness now, so he cannot use it. I'm using my Ring of Renewal, by the way, again. I think my hand's full of land at this point. Exactly, another land gone. Probably I just hit a land pocket and I'm just trying to dump my lands right now. So hopefully I can find something. Gonna pay four. What am I gonna do? A primal clay? Really? A primal clay? <laughs> oh man. I am so toast. If this is the best thing that I can do, playing a 2-2 flyer, it's gonna die to Ishan's Gaia's Avenger anyway. Or am I just gonna keep everything untapped thinking if Ishan attacks me, he loses his Gaia's Avenger? I mean, it could be a strategy, I guess. It's, it's, at least it is a strategy. It's something. I've got a lot of power on board, so I mean, might work. Anyway, passing turn to Chris. Let's see if Chris can find some lands and do something here. Tapping his storage land, taking off all the counters, playing an icy manipulator. Man, I feel I'm the only player without an icy manipulator on the board. I feel bad about this. I also want an icy. It's not fair. Oh man, all these icies. At least I've got a relic barrier that can tap down icies. That's something. It looks like we're counting the artifacts again. I mean, it's just insane how big these Gaia's Avengers are. Mine is like a 15-15. Ishan's is just huge, huge. It's just, what's my power toughness? Huge, huge. Next question. Man, looking at the life totals, by the way, I mean, we are kind of moving. I wouldn't say to the end of the game, but it's getting closer. Um, Chris is on five, so he's really low. But I guess it's in nobody's interest to kill him right now. Marco's on 13. I'm on 15. And then we've got Ishan who's on 16. But I think Ishan with the power leech, I mean, he's, he's going to net some life. Is he going to use his Aladdin's lamp? I, I sure hope so. So in his upkeep, he can use his lamp. And then he draws his card for turn, which is a card he selected with the lamp. So he's going to sack four mana. Look at the top four. So remember, he picks one. The rest goes on the bottom of his library. He's going to go through his cards. And then that's the card that he's going to draw for turn. So he's looking at it. Okay, pick this card. I wonder what it is. 
I mean, I think what they should have done, by the way, with Aladdin's Lamp is say, the card you pick, you can just put it directly into your hand and you also draw just a normal card for turn. But uh, they did what they did. I, th I think it then wouldn't be overplayed. Okay, there's a Maze of If. That's actually quite good. He's tapping four. What is he going to do? He's going to... Ooh, Titania Song. This is... <laughs> This is going to be insane, insane. I'm actually quite happy with this song because I'm looking at all the artifacts on the side of Marco that are now just creatures. So Titania Song turns all the non-artifact creatures into creatures with power and toughness equal to their casting cost. So yes, I'm losing all my books, right? They're going to be turned into creatures. I'm lo losing my Relic Barrier, but I think when I'm looking at, you know, at Marco, he's losing... He's done his coffin, he's losing his disc, he's losing his rocket launcher, he's also losing his book. So I think for him, the damage is the biggest with this decision. For Ishan, what I think is really cool is that he's now getting a 10-10 Aladdin's Lamp. That's just hilarious. We do, of course, see some responses by Marco here, using his Icy Manipulator one last time to tap something down. And um, that means Ishan's gaining more life. Oh, this is so funny. This And this is really going to change the game. I mean, again, it's really difficult for players to get rid of enchantments in this game. And just in general with these EDH games, it's kind of hard. Because you can only play one of each. So enchantment removal is already pretty scarce in old school. But with this format, it's even more scarce. And uh, Marco pointing towards his living wall. Yes, your living wall is still the same. So now he's going to untap. Remember, all these artifacts, non-artifact creatures, are now actually creatures. Nevernor's Disc of 4-4, Icy Manipulator of 4-4, Jam Day Tome of 4-4, Jalem Tome of 3-3. He's just got a lot of 4-4s. Four let, let me put it like that. And, and also his um, archaeologist is just not that good anymore. I mean, it's still okay. He can, he can use it to get artifacts back and... Those are basically big creatures, like his Gauntlet of Chaos is 5 mana to cast, so it's a 5-5. Five, five. But, I mean, it would be, the Archaeologist would be far, far more dangerous, um, you know, if, if, if it could get the artifacts back and the artifacts would still actually work. Let's see if Marco can kind of find a way to get the Titania Song off the table, or is he just going to attack everybody? That's also an option. And I'm kind of surprised that I'm not pinging the Archaeologist here, by the way. I, I think I missed it. Maybe I was so, like... Focus on Ishan's silly turn. I'm forgetting that I can actually just kill. I can ping the, the archaeologist here. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what Marco's gonna do. I mean, I've got a lot of creatures too right now. I mean, I can I can deal some damage. Do remember that Ishan also has that power leech in place still. That means he gets one life every time an artifact gets tapped. So that is huge. Okay, so he's tapping his workshop. It looks like he's going to cast an artifact for six here. Changing his mind, though. Tapping just five white. Is he going to cast Sarah Angel, maybe, for five? Ooh, Veteran Bodyguard. Oh, <laughs> Veteran Bodyguard. Lou Ferengo, the Hulk, entering the show. Loving it. So it's a 2-5 creature, and it soaks up all the combat damage. And uh, it is a 2-5, so if the combat damage is more than 5, it is going to die, like any other creature. But it's kind of a safety net, and it's also nice for Marco, because he also has the Diamond Valley, so he can also net it for 5 life. It's just really tough to deal damage to Marco. So far, I mean, I'm surprised he's, he's on 13, that we got him on 13. I think I should just start pinging Marco at this point. It looks like he wants to attack. He is going to attack here. Also attacking with his angry mob. Let's see who he's going to attack. So he's attacking with the rocket launcher, with uh, his Jam Day Tome. And with his angry mob, is he going to attack Ishan here? Because Ishan's kind of open, right? Ishan only has the Icy Manipulator. And he, he probably wants to kill Ishan so, you know, he can get rid of the Titania Song. Yeah, so he is attacking Ishan. So Ishan's taking the damage. Of course, he's gaining two life again from those two artifacts, but he is dealing damage. And 
He's blocking the rocket launcher, I believe, with the IC manipulator. And then the the rocket launcher is a 3-3, three, three if I'm if or is it a 4-4? Four, four? It's a 3-3, three, three, exactly. So it's still alive. I could ping it to death though. I could use I, I mean I should do that. And then there's a little discussion. If Marco wants to use his Diamond Valley before damage is dealt, that is actually something he can do. That would mean he gains three points of life. I think that's what he does. That also means that I can no longer kill the IC Manipulator of Ishan. And now Marco's going up in life again. I mean, this is also bad. Unfortunately, we can't really see that last dice there on the side of Marco, but I think it's a one, so he's on 16. I'm using my pingers here. Yeah, I'm going to put Marco on 14. I'm still not killing the archaeologist. I think I'm missing this, to be honest. Look at that, sacking one of my artifacts. I've got enough anyway, so I just want to find the right cards. I've got some really good cards in my deck, including an, a, uh, a Control Magic, which could be uh, influential, and also uh, a Steel Artifact. Of course, a Brain Geyser, but I already got so many cards. So drawing a card for turn, so many lands on my side. I still have that Apprentice Wizard as well. Now remember, all my non-artifact creatures are just creatures. So it looks very impressive, but the problem is my opponents have very impressive board states as well. I mean, I'm looking at Ishan with that Gaius Avenger. And also Marco, it's so tough to deal damage to Marco. I can attack him with my flyer, I guess, my 2-2 flyer, but only that's going to be soaked up by his veteran bodyguard. I can attack Ishan with Gaius Avenger, but then next turn he's probably going to attack me. Looks like I want to attack here with my Clockwork Beast. I am going to attack here with my Gaius Avenger, but Ishan, I mean, he's got a Maze of If, though. So Ishan is using his Maze... On my Clockwork Beast. And... Who am I then attacking? I'm deciding not to attack, I guess. Who was I attacking them with Gaius Avenger? This is kind of vague, to be honest. Ooh, also playing an IC. I'm part of the IC team. It is a 4-4 now. I guess I decided not to attack with the Gaius Avenger. That was a little bit unclear here, but I untapped it again. So I guess I decided not to attack with it. And I just changed my mind. I think it's just really tough at this point in the game. I mean, I can ping, which is good enough. I can just keep everything untapped. So I'm passing turn here. Got seven cards in hand, it seems. Chris finding a land. That's good news, Chris. So really happy for Chris here finding that land. Tapping four. What's he going to cast? And always playing a Greed. Yeah, that's kind of worthless for him. Greed, play one black, pay two life to draw a card. At this point in the game, it's quite bad because Chris is on five. I mean, he needs a life. And I guess I decided not to attack with the Clockwork Beast instead. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. It was a bad attack. I forgot about the um, Maze of If on the side of Ishan. And here we see Ishan... Untap with his 10-10 Aladdin's Lamp. That's just hysterical. I wonder what he's going to do. He's got so much firepower. And remember, there's a lure still on his Gaze Avenger. He could easily kill Chris, but why would he? So he is attacking. I believe he is attacking Marco here. So he's going to attack Marco with his 16-16. Let's see what Marco can do in response. The problem is that lure. That's a problem for Marco. You know, if, if the lure were, wasn't there, he could just say, you know what, I'm going to block with my living wall and regenerate it. But lure means he has to block with all his creatures, and that is huge. And he's going to lose so much. So I do understand this attack by Ishan here. I'm really happy with it, that he's not attacking me for a change. It's going to be super interesting to see what Marco's going to do here. He's actually attacking with more. Okay, I thought 
He's attacking with every, he was attacking Sean with, or Marco with everything. Wow. So he's attacking Marco with the 10 10, the 4 4 flyer, the 4 4 icy manipulator, and the Gaze Avenger with lure. That is ridiculous. Again, under normal circumstances, Marco could say, you know what? Bodyguard's going to soak everything up. But he's forced to block here because of the lure on the Gaia's Avenger. I mean, all the other damage is still going to the Bodyguard, though. So, I mean... But I think it's going to kill all his creatures, really. There's so much power coming at him. And of course, there's some math involved here. Marco's trying to figure out, okay, what is going to happen here? How can I divide the damage? What do I want to kill? And it looks like Ishan is, again, changing his mind. The, the thing is, we cannot hear the players talk. So sometimes you have these combat situations where one of the players says, okay, guys, I just want to figure something out. So I'm just going to tap some creatures, talk out loud, trying to figure some stuff out. And then they come with... a. Um, definitive declaration of attack. You know, let me put it that way, where to say, okay, I'm going to tap, I'm going to attack with this, going to do, I'm going to do this. You know what? Okay, I've, I've made up my mind. I'm only going to attack with, and then they make their final attack. And I think this is an example of, of Ishan doing this in the game. So we see Mark now responding, using his Argivian archaeologist to get back one of his artifacts. I think that's a very good decision. And now he's got to block everything, right? So that's... A lot of damage. And Ishan is right now telling Marco how he wants to divide the damage. So he's got 17 points of power to divide. And I, th I think you definitely want to kill the bodyguard, to be honest. It looks like he wants to kill everything but the bodyguard. I think I would definitely go for the bodyguard. Maybe take out the soul ring and the Jalem tome because then you've got enough left because he can deal. Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. Because he can deal 17 points of damage. So, yeah, that's 12. So, what he could do is just take out the Soul Ring and the uh, the Jalem Tome. And deal those leftover points of damage to the Bodyguard. And then all of that is dead. I think that's what they're communicating about right now. So he's saying, I want to kill the bodyguard. I want to kill the coffin. I mean, this for me, this is great, of course. You know, I mean, for me and Chris, this is fantastic. We're just looking at this thinking, okay, he's just going to lose a lot of stuff. Ishan's going to lose his adventure. Of course, he's going to recast it, but still, at least the lure's gone. Because I think Marco's got enough to kill it, right? Um... 12, 14, 15, 18. Oh, wow. Look at that. So he's going to give it plus 7, plus 7. That means his bodyguard survives and the Gaze Avenger dies. This is a very good move by Marco here, saving his veteran bodyguard. I mean, he still lost a lot, but it's it's good. And, and Ishan instantly recasting his Gaze Avenger, by the way. Which is a bit smaller now because a lot of artifacts have gone, Ishan. you got to recount again. But I've got a lot of artifacts still. <laughs> Look at that. My Gaze Adventure also getting smaller. So we're counting the artifacts again. This is such a silly game. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this. And if you're watching this and you usually only play like the normal commander, when you're looking at this old school commander, is this kind of... Do you enjoy this? Do you think, okay, I'm going to play it as well? Or do you think this is just a madhouse? I mean, it is true what they say with these... Old school commander games, they do take forever, but you just get all these weird situations like we're having right now. You see the coolest cards being played. And for me, especially seeing those cards being played is, is my main reason. And see cards that are usually, you know, not very useful in other formats or all of a sudden useful in this new kind of commander old school style multiplayer format. So that's that's always a huge reason for me that I want to play this, uh, enjoy playing this format, I should say. Anyway, Marco taking on his turn right now. And of course, it is a difficult situation for Marco after that huge attack by Ishan. Like, what can he do? He's kind of in the tank here. 
And I wonder if I'm finally going to kill his archaeologist. I mean, there's reason to, to kill the archaeologist. I do believe that Marco still has the Gauntlet of Chaos in hand, so he could play that out. I mean, it's of course just a creature because of the Titania song, but still, it's a 5-5 body. That is not too bad. And it looks like he's kind of contemplating on what to do. He is tapping 5. There we see the Gauntlets of Chaos. So that is a 5-5 creature. And I wonder what else he's going to do. He is just passing turn. And look at this. I'm using my Timmy to ping down his archaeologist. In response, he's going to use his archaeologist. And I'm also going to deal one damage to Marco as well, I believe, with the pirate ship. So putting him on 13. And I'm using that Sage of Latinam to sec my Basalt Monolith. So there's a lot happening here on end step. And Marco's getting back the Nevenerals disc and passing turn. So I'm going to untap. I wonder if I'm going to attack somebody. I really do. Tapping four here. And okay, I'm casting the Hive. The Hive is five. Okay, I'm tapping five, I guess. So it is a five, five creature because of the Titania song. And I'm paying one to play a Soul Net. So also just a one, one. Of course, I could use the Soul Net to sack. Um, to sack it to the Sage of Latin and draw a card. There we see a Skull of Orm. Normally a really good card in my deck because if I have Control Magic or Control Artifact in the yard, it's super handy. But in this case, it is just a 3-3 three, three creature. And it looks like I'm going to align some artifacts to attack. I wonder what I'm going to do. Remember, every time I tap an artifact... Okay, so my primal clay is a 2-2 flyer. I'm going to attack Ishan. And I'm now attacking Marco with my 5-5 five, five Ring of Renewal and my 6-6 six, six Book of Rass. Now Marco still has that Living Wall to block with, so it's definitely one of his, uh, of his potential blockers. There we see a Maze of If being used on my Primal Clay. So he's sending it back, so nothing really happens to Ishan. So that was kind of a stupid attack on my part. I just keep forgetting those mazes for some reason. Anyway, attacking here with the Ring of Renewal and Book of Ras towards Marco. And of course, Ishan is gaining some life because of that. Because of the Power Leech. Such a good card in this, uh, in this multiplayer. I mean, he's all the way back up to 17 again. It looks like he's going to block with his Angry Mob. I wonder what he's going to block. It looks like he's blocking the 6-6 six, six on the Book of Ras or the Ring of Renewal. I think the Ring of Renewal on the Book of Ras and... Uh, sorry, the, the Ring of Renewal on the Angry Mob and the Book of Ras on the Living Wall. I'm a little bit surprised that he's doing that. So anyway, the turn goes up to Chris. He's tapping 5. What is he going to cast? And there is a Sengir Vampire, so the 4-4 four, four Flyer. And it's good to see Chris kind of playing stuff out, doing things. Passing turn to Ishan here. I mean, the thing is, with the Titania song, everything is just a creature. So, it has kind of simplified the game. So, this book is now just a 4-4 four, four creature. So, Ishan really in the tank. What is he going to do? And I'm counting my mana again. He's thinking so hard. He's like, what can I do? I mean, Marco still is pretty is, is looking pretty good because of the Living Wall. I mean, he's weakened for sure, but the Living Wall is still very valuable on the side of Marco. And it's going to be tough for Ishan also to attack me, I think. So there we see an attack with the Avenger, and it looks like he's attacking Chris with it, and he's also... Oh no, he's attacking Chris with the Aladdin's Lamp, and Chris is jumping it with the Soul Net. That makes absolute sense. And that is actually making the Gaia's Avenger smaller, because an artifact uh, is killed. And there's the pass turn towards Marco. So he's untapping now. I mean, I'm actually feeling pretty confident. I think I've got the best board at the moment, and I'm kind of drawing cards because of my Sage. 
and they can ping everybody. So, ooh, there's actually Aladdin's ring would normally be quite powerful in this situation, but for now it's just an 8-8. Eight, eight. And look at that, sacking my soul net to draw a card. And, oh, I'm forgetting. No, I'm pinging. Okay, I almost thought I forgot to ping there. I wonder who I'm going to ping. So pinging for two. Let's have a look. Where's that damage going? Damage is going to Marco, and one damage is going to Ishan. So Marco dropping to 12, Ishan to 16. There is a Holy Light, minus one, minus one, and there's a counter spell. So countering it to save my uh, Prodigal Sorcerer here from destruction. I mean, the players are starting to see that, you know, the pingers are getting more and more valuable in the scenario because it's, it's just, it's such a chess game right now. Playing a Suchi, which is, of course, a 4-4. And an Air Elemental. This Air Elemental could be pretty big, big because, ooh, even more playing a Chaos Orb as well. So just playing tons of artifacts here that are basically just all creatures that I can also sack to the Sage to draw extra cards. I think the Air Elemental could kind of have an impact on the board. It's definitely a weapon I can use against Marco because he, he doesn't have any flyers. And, of course, he's got the Veteran Bodyguard, but, but I can ping the Veteran Bodyguard for one after my attack with the Air Elemental, killing it. I think that's kind of my plan right now. Look at Chris, Demonic Tutor. What is he going to tutor for? What does he want, really? I think he still wants land, but at this point, he's, he's got kind of enough land to do one thing a turn. So that's something. I also wonder if he's going to attack with his Sengir. And Chris, looking up his card, I mean, he's still in this. Maybe, I mean, the, the problem for Chris is that he's so low, or else I would definitely find, like, for example, a Pestilence. And he doesn't have enough mana, you know, to go for, like, a Drain Life. So I'm really curious to see what he's going to look up. He is shuffling again, so he has picked his card. He's putting it back, paying one, and okay, there's a soul ring, so maybe he looked up a soul ring just to have more mana. And it looks like that's it, he's passing turn to Ishan. And of course his uh, Fallen Empire's Storch Land is ticking up again slowly, it's now at three. Hollow Trees, he's drawing a card for turn. I have to say, the fact that he's got the Power Leech and the Maze of If makes it super annoying. Ishan gonna tap three here or not, taking it back. He is tapping three lands, and okay, there is a force field, just a 3 3 creature again because of the Titania song. That card has such an impact on the game. And Marco pointing out that Force Field and Veteran Bodyguard is a great combo, I agree. It's, it's, it's definitely an original one. I should probably put it in Forgotten Combos. Ishan, two cards in hand now. I mean, I don't think there's much that he can do. Yes, he can attack Chris again, that's something, but do you want to? And I, I guess not, I think he's just passing turn here. So Marco untapping here. He's going to draw for... Oh, he can use his his Lantex again. Who would have thought? I guess he started to count the lands. I'm not sure who has the most lands, but I assume uh, Marco has uh, checked it before, before activating the tax. So he's finding even more planes, drawing a card for turn. Let's see what he can do. Obviously, he's playing a Plains, going through his graveyard. Maybe he's got a Resurrection? Tapping four here, casting a Clay Statue, a 3-1 with Regeneration from the Antiquities expansion. I mean, Regeneration, again, it's nice. I mean, he's got another decent blocker, so it's going to be tougher and tougher to kill him. Then again, the Clay Statue has one toughness, so I can, I can ping it and then forcing Marco to regenerate it. Marco tapping th oh, 4 here. There's the Nevenerals disc coming into play untapped because of the Titania song. So it's just a 4-4 four, four body. And uh, I'm going to ping Ishan for 2, it seems. So Ishan's going to drop to 14. I mean, I wonder if that's, that's the right play. 
Because maybe it's better to just focus on Marco because only six more pings and he's dead. Okay, there's a soul ring. And I think I'm attacking Marco right now. Let's see if Marco can do something or else his veteran bodyguard is going to soak up the damage and then I can ping him for one. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm pinging the bodyguard for one and the bodyguard's going to die if my plan works out, of course. Let's see if Marco can find a way around it. In response, Marco's going to eat up the bodyguard with the Diamond Valley and that, of course, makes sense. And now he's going to go back up to 17. And I'm also playing a Nevenerals Disc, sacking my Soul Ring to the Sage of Latinum to draw yet another card. I think it's probably better just to do it end step. I mean, I get it why I'm doing it main phase, because maybe I'm just going to find some kind of key card. But if that's really my philosophy, then I should have probably done that before combat. Anyway, I'm passing turn to Chris. Chris is tapping a lot. There's a Ring of Renewal. Now, it is just a 5-5. Five five. And there is a pass by by Chris. So Ishan is going to untap, right? Oh, it looks like he's played out a disc as well, and he's attacking with the Tetravus. And he is attacking Marco here. So Marco dropping to 13. A little bit of pressure on Marco. Marco, of course, doesn't have the uh, the bodyguard anymore. So all of a sudden, Ishan can attack with his 4-4. Four -four. And always oh, playing out a Gaius Avenger. Gaius Avenger, uh, pretty cool card. You don't see it that often. It's a 4-4 for four, four, 6 mana from the Antiquities expansion. You can pay 0, and then it, you can give it First Strike, Flying, Trample, or Rampage, I believe, even. And um, no, not Rampage, because that, that wasn't in the set yet. That, that wasn't there until Legends. Anyway, there's a ton of abilities you can give it, and every time you give it an ability, it gets minus 1, minus 1. So, for example, when you give it Flying it becomes a 3-3 flyer because it gets minus 1, minus 1. So again, pinging Ishan for 2 points here of damage. He's going to drop to 13. Untapping everything. So I've got my air elemental again. So I could attack Marco here, putting him on 9. That would be pretty good. So using my 2-2 flyer and my air elemental, I believe I'm attacking... Uh, Marco here for 6. So that would mean he would drop to 7. Oh, I'm actually attacking Ishan. Oh, I thought it was attacking Marco. I'm attacking Ishan instead. So he's only taking two damage from the Primal Clay, and that's it. I'm not sure if my strategy here to kind of divide and conquer is, is, is working. Maybe I should just go for one player and try to kill that player. And I think right now, I mean, it looks like Marco is the most open. Passing turn to Chris. So he's going to untap three counters thus far on his, on his storage land. So I guess his mana problems are kind of over now. He is tapping every... Th oh, he's tapping five, and he's going to play his commander finally, the Thrall Champion. So it's a 2-2 two -two creature that gives all Thralls plus one plus one, including itself. So it's basically a 3-3, three -three, and it's also going to boost the armor Thrall on the board. So a little bit of value here for Chris, passing turn immediately to Ishan, by the way, after casting his commander. So Ishan really kind of in the tank is like, I've got a lot of big creatures. Should be able to kind of make an impression around the board. He's going to attack for four again. I believe he's going to attack Marco again. So Marco looking at his cards. I mean, that would mean he would go to nine. And he is going to nine here. Of course, Marco still has that Diamond Valley, so he can start sacking creatures, gaining a lot of life. I mean, the uh, Aladdin's ring alone is, is 8 life with the Diamond Valley. Tapping 4. Okay, playing Dancing Scimitar. It's pretty good. At least he's got a flying blocker. The annoying thing for Marco here... Oh, and he's going to recast his commander. I mean, I can ping it again, but why not? At least it's going to save him a damage. That's probably what he's thinking. And he's got the mana. So I think this is a good move by Marco. So showing the mana, of course, every time you want to recast your commander, you've got to pay two extra for the amount of times that it died. So using my pingers again, 
And uh, yeah, killing the archaeologist again, pinging Ishan for one, and drawing a card. So sacking my Skull of Orm to draw a card with the Sage of Latinam. I wonder what I'm going to do now with my Air Elemental. Again an attack. And I'm going to attack Ishan again. So, I mean, it's only one damage a turn. I think this is really not the... Uh, maybe it's politics that I'm doing this, but I think it's, it's really a better decision to just attack Marco. Ishan on 10, Marco on 9. And Chris now thinking what he's going to do. Tapping 6. Ooh, there's a Tetravis. Also a 4-4 flyer for him. And he's playing a raised dead. He's getting back the Kumbach Witches. It went very quickly, but he's getting back the Kumbach Witches. And this is a problem for me. I do not want Chris to have the Witches because he can use that to kill... My Protocol Sorcerer, I do, I do not want him to do that. I mean, the Tim, the Pingers are super important for me in this matchup. Anyway, see Sean's turn, play to Forest. He is so in the tank right now. Going through his hand. And passing turn, he's doing nothing. So he no longer wants to attack with the Tetravis. And this is kind of my fault. I feel like I should have... Maybe I need to attack Marco next turn with the Air Elemental. And okay, there we see a Suleiman bottle, which is just a 4-4 right now. Or bottle of Suleiman, I should say. Card from Arabian Nights. Really fun card, but now because of the Titania song, it is just a 4-4 creature. And a pass turn. So I'm going to ping again. And I'm pinging Chris. Look at this. So after that raise that on the Kumbach Witches, I've decided to target Chris. And that kind of makes sense because I do not want to lose my Timmy. Attacking with my Air Elemental. It looks like I'm going to attack Marco this time. But now Marco can get flying to his Avenger. Oh, this is stupid. And he can double block. Ugh. That is not smart. I was only thinking about, you know, he only has the Dancing Scimitar to block. That's what I thought. But I forgot that the Avenger, of course, can get flying. So this is a very good block by Marco. What a mistake on my side here. I guess I should ping the Dancing Scimitar. Kill it. At least then Ishan has an opening to attack with his Tetravis. So we kind of had a discussion here where Marco says, you know, I can um, sack it to the Diamond Valley. And we're having a discussion there because I'm saying, well, I'm actually, when you declare blockers before damage is dealt, I ping the Scimitar for one. If you then sack the Scimitar, it no longer deals damage to the Air Elemental because damage isn't dealt yet. And then I can kill your Avenger. So that was kind of the discussion that we were having. So it was impossible for him to also kill it. And now I'm playing a Backfire. Wow, Backfire card from Legends. I wonder on what card I'm going to play it. This is kind of risky for me, by the way, because I don't have... Well, I've got my 2-2 Primal Clay Flyer, but that's about it. I don't have any other Flyers. Okay, so I'm playing it on the Tetravis, it seems. And that means the way Backfire works is that, is that if Ishan attacks me with the Tetravis, he's going to take... Four points of damage. If he just attacks anybody else, it's okay. Using my Sage, by the way, here to sack the Jam Day Tome. I mean, Backfire is kind of like a reverse Spirit Link. So instead of gaining life for damage, this one is gives damage to the owner of the creature. Anyway, I'll, sh I'll, I'll show it in the video. It'll make more sense when you read it, probably. But um, yeah, put the Backfire on the Tetravis of Ishan. Which I'm not sure is a good move because Ishan can take the counter self. But anyway, oh, okay, but then I can ping it. Okay, it kind of makes sense. Passing turn to Chris. Let's see what Chris can do. He is tapping three. What is he going to do? Is he going to play Kumbach Witches? Oh, he's playing Eben Prater. That's so cool. Eben Prater in combination with the Breeding Pit. That is badass. 
So he's got Abin Prater and he's got the Breeding Pit out. And that is just fantastic because he can sack a Thrall token to the Abin Prater. And then the Abin Prater will, will become bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, that is the dream, Chris. That is one of the many combos that you have with your Breeding Pit. Passing turn to Ishan, by the way. And he's playing a ring from a Legends. It's a card you don't see often. A card that's actually really good in this format. But for now, it is just a 5-5 because of the song. And there's the attack by Chris. And I believe he's going to attack Marco here with the 4-4. So again, that means that the uh, the backfire isn't going to work here. Because Ishan's not attacking Marco, not me. So Marco dropping to 5. Ooh, his life total. And I would expect Marco to start sacking a creature to the Diamond Valley here in, in end step. But he's actually not doing it. I think if I were Marco, I would start sacking creatures. I mean, he's got enough creatures. He can do it. I mean, the game is coming to an end, but it's ever so slowly. And Marco really into tank here, trying to figure out what the best move is. I mean, he needs to gain life fast. He he needs some flyers. But he's just passing turn, so I'm going to ping here, putting Chris on two, and now I can kill Chris. I don't necessarily have to. I can wait until he plays the Kumbach Witches, but maybe I should. I mean, at the certain point, we need to get to an ending of this game, tapping a lot of islands here. What am I going to cast? Ooh, a Colossus of Sardia. That is so sweet. 9-9 nine, nine Trample. Absolute powerhouse. I mean, but it's not even that big. Check out Ishan. He's got a 10 10 Aladdin's Lamp, a huge Gaze Avenger. Even if I attack Marco with it, he's got an Aladdin's Ring of an 8 8. He can just double block and kill the Colossus. So, Colossus is not that big. Here we see Chris second the Thrall token to the Ebon Praetor. So, the Ebon Praetor is getting even bigger. It is such a cool creature. It's so cool to see this combo uh, here on the board, Chris. The problem for Chris, of course, is that he's just on two. Is he going to do some kind of Alpha Strike? He is playing a Necrite here, which is also a Thrall, by the way. And he's also playing the Kumbach Witches. So that is pretty good. But with those Kumbach Witches, he's kind of digging his own grave. Because I really don't want him to have the Kumbach Witches. But I mean, I have to say, Chris has managed to kind of, you know, build up an impressive board state considering that he was on two or three lands for most of this uh, entire game. And he's past turn to Ishan, by the way, he just untapped. And hopefully for me, he's going to attack Marco again with the Tetravis. That would be fantastic. He's going to tap three green, cast a Wanderlust. Oh, man. And I think he's actually casting it on my Colossus of Sardia. Or on my Avenger. I think on my Avenger. He's casting the Wanderlust on my Avenger. So remember, I still have the cloned Avenger that's been there forever, by the way. Yep, there's the Wanderlust. So Wanderlust is an enchant creature that deals one damage to the owner of the creature during the upkeep. So it's kind of pinging me back, which is funny. I mean, but I'm, you know, I'm on 15, so who knows? Only 15 more turns, and that's not even that bad. There's an attack by Ishan. I think he's attacking Marco again. So Marco can, of course, use his Urza's Avenger. He could also choose to sack a creature, just gain a lot of life. Tapping two, and oh, there's a Divine Offering, so he's going to kill it. That means he's going to get six life, right? Yeah, he gets life. Oh, man, that's so bad. He gains life equal to the casting cost, so he's going to go up to 11 again. This, this game is never ending. We're just too tough. We cannot kill each other, and we cannot be killed. The board is so clocked up at the moment and we cannot use an Evanerals Discs because of Titania's Song. I've already countered the Wrath of God earlier in the game. We don't have a red player. Chris, okay, Chris is dead. Look at this. On end step of Marco, I am killing Chris here. Ending it and sacking my Barrel Skate to the Sage of Latinam. Taking a damage 
by the way, from the Wanderlust. And I think what's going really, really well for me is the fact that I'm drawing an extra card every turn. So I'm going through my deck quicker, looking for solutions. There are still a real, some really strong cards in my deck that can help me win this. Like this card, this is a Time Elemental. This is fantastic. With Time Elemental, I can start sending stuff back. For example, that annoying Maze of If, but of course I could also play uh, Time Elemental on my own clone and then I'll lose the Wanderlust. So this Time Elemental is huge, actually. And I think I'm passing turn right now. I mean, there's no need for me to attack. I can just, you know, hang back. Yeah, passing turn here to Ishan, so he's putting an extra storage counter on his land again. The Wanderlust he should... Oh, it's still there, of course. I wonder what he's going to do. I mean, if both players do nothing, eventually they will, I will kill them. So they have to find a way to deal with my pingers and now also with my time elemental. The time elemental is really huge. Marco on 11, Ishan on 11. And it's now Marco's turn again, tapping six mana. Ooh, he's playing a trike. That is huge. With his trike, spell blast on the trike. Yes. This is such an important counter because with the trike, it could kill my Tim or maybe my pirate ship. So it's oof, it's a worst case scenario for me. I also have trikes in my deck, by the way, that would be perfect because I can play trike, deal three damage to Marco, send it back to my hand with time elemental and use it again. So dealing two damage to Marco, your Marco dropping to nine. It looks like I'm dropping here to 13. Oh, because of the Wanderlust, of course. Playing a Knowledge Vault. Beautiful art. Again, it is just a 4-4 because of the Titania song. I just keep reminding you guys about this. It looks like I want to attack. I'm not sure if that's smart. Asking Ishan, I believe, how much blockers he has. I mean, Ishan's got the maze. Marco has that regeneration. I mean, I'm just going to give Ishan life here, I feel. Looks like I'm attacking with the Colossus of Sardia. I'm attacking Marco here with the 9-9. I think I'm probably better off just keeping it untapped, maybe sacking it even to the Sage for a card. I think this is this is a bad play. And uh, we see some camera shifts here. It looks like Chris has left us for a moment. There's Chris's back. So this is a little bit annoying here. So I'm going to try to change the screen in a way that we know what's what. I'm a little bit disoriented now. I believe I was attacking Marco here with my 9-9 Colossus. So he's going to double block the Colossus. Ooh, wait a minute. I can send back his ring. Could I do that? And then he takes a lot of damage or not? Does that work that way? I'm not really sure, so I'm going to use my Time Elemental. To send back the clay statue. So that means I can kill the Alan's Ring. He doesn't take, I don't take any damage. I do think he blocked those. So I'm not quite sure if he takes any trample damage because he's already declared blockers. So I'm not quite sure if this is the correct line of play, but what's happening right now is that Marco is taking a damage because my Colossus is a 9-9 and I've sent back the clay statue to his hand. So he's, yeah, going down in life. And I'm passing the turn here. So it's Ishan's turn. He's playing a Rod of Ruin. That's actually pretty good. Oh no, it's just a 4. I keep thinking these are artifacts, but... They're not, they're just creatures. This game would be so different without a Titania song. So Ishan's on 12. Marco's on 7. Look at that, Ishan's gonna go for an Alpha Strike. I mean, he kinda has to, right? Or else he's slowly gonna die. Is he going to attack me? I guess if he's gonna attack me, it's gonna be tough. It looks like he's gonna attack Marco, so he... Is he trying to get into second place or something? And Marco's playing Holy Day. Wow. 
So that means Marco takes zero damage. Holy day, a card from Legends. Kind of the fog from white. Great play here by Marco. And then I wonder what Marco's going to do on his turn. The problem for both players here is that I'm still winning. So it's great, of course, that they're attacking each other, but it's not going to help them really. So Marco's on eight. There we go. There we see his life total again. Oh, he's playing a maze of if. So both players now, Ishan and Marco, having a maze of if. I mean, I could send it back with my time elemental, but do I really want to? I'm on 13 now, so I'm taking damage still from the uh, Wanderlust, so maybe I should send that, that back. Anyway, let's see what Marco's going to do. Tapping four mana. Oh, yeah, recasting the clay statue. And I'm looking at my mana base. Remember, it's 9 mana to untap the Colossus of Sardia. Ishan is really, 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 really open. So it's very tempting for Marco, but also for me to start attacking Ishan next turn. The thing is, if I kill Ishan, the Titania song leaves play. And that means that Marco will have his Navanero's disc again. And he can blow everything up. So I think it is not in my best interest to kill Ishan right now. For now, it looks like, by the way, it's still Marco's turn that he's really in the tank, trying to find a, a line of play that can kind of save him out of this, this dire situation. I mean, if Ishan's going to swing in again with everything for whatever reason, it could really be the end of the line for Marco. I guess if you're Ishan, you want to kill... Nah, you don't want to kill Marco. I don't... I think he needs... I think they need to team up against me, to be honest. It looks like Marco's going to pass turn. I'm going to use, of course, my pirate ship and my Timmy. And it looks like I'm pinging Ishan, so he's going to go down to 10. I'm going to take another damage from the Wanderlust, so I'm going to drop to 12. And I'm thinking, do I want to use the 9 mana to untap the Colossus of Sardia? That's something I have to do in my upkeep, so counting my mana. And they're using my Apprentice Wizard as well here to untap the Colossus. Playing another Tron Land. Unfortunately, I sacked the or discarded the Urza's Tower earlier in the game, so I cannot assemble Tron anymore. This may sound kind of lame, but I think just passing turn for me is the best option and just wait till end step. I am asking now, Marco, like, how many creatures do you have? How big are your creatures? It's a 4 4, a 5 5, a 4 4, a 3 3, a 4 4, a Living Wall, which is an 0 6, the Avenger, which is a 4 4, and the Clay Statue, which is a 3 1. Sending back his Navanero's disc. Interesting. Am I really thinking about killing him? It looks like I am. I'm really trying to do the math here. I mean, the problem here is if I do, I got to be very careful though, because I'm on 12. It's not like I'm on a lot here. I think maybe I'm digging my own grave now by wanting to kill Marco. And what if Marco has, is there another like holy day effect in white? Reverse damage could be the case. Anyway, attacking him here with a Ring of Renewal, the Hive, which is also a 5-5, a 9-9 Trample in the form of Colossus of Sardia, and a 14-14 Gay as Avenger. And that means life ticking up for Ishan because I'm tapping artifacts. So I'm attacking Marco here. Marco, of course, having that Maze of If. He also has two creatures with regeneration, so actually this attack is not really a big problem for Marco. Does he have another kind of answer to this? Ooh, Ishan's playing a fog! Wow! So I guess I was attacking Ishan, you're trying to kill Ishan. Instead of Marco, I thought I was attacking Marco, but Ishan here using a fog to keeping himself alive. That is so interesting. 
So I guess I send back the Never Knows this to Marco, knowing that if I would kill Ishan with my attack, Marco would have at at the end, you know, at the beginning of his turn, he would have his Never Knows disc, he could blow everything up. So I send back the Never Knows disc so I could attack and potentially kill Ishan. The problem here is that Ishan had a fog to prevent the damage. So I thought it was attacking Marco when I look back at this, but I'm actually attacking Ishan. And Ishan had a great response with the with the fog. But at least the fog's out of the game. The holy day is out of the game. But I am thinking now about this card called Spore Cloud, which is in green. It's from Fallen Empire. It's kind of a fog effect. It's even slightly better, but it's more expensive to cast. And it looks like it looks like Ishan is recounting the power and toughness of his Avenger, by the way. I mean, it's so interesting, right? I mean, the, the, the players, Ishan knows he's got to do something. Marco knows that he's got to do something. But it's also, when you tap out, you open yourself up to all sorts of dangers. There we see Marco playing a Mesa Pegasus, so I could kill that, of course. And that's why Marco's playing it. He's like, well, then at least you deal one damage to the Pegasus and not to us. I guess I could kill the bird here and I could kill the Pegasus. Looks like I'm killing the Pegasus. Am I also killing the bird or just dealing a damage? He's actually eating the Pegasus, going to 9. And I'm going to untap everything. Am I also going to untap the Colossus, taking a damage again from the Wanderlust? Going to 11. Counting the mana, untapping the Colossus, okay. This game, insane. Absolutely insane. Tapping some mana again. Gauntlet of Chaos. It's a 5-5 five five now. So I'm also playing with Gauntlet of Chaos. Three cards in hand. It looks like I'm just going to pass turn or I'm actually going to attack anybody. No, I'm just passing turn to Ishan here. So kind of understanding that I need to start using my time elemental on the end step so I can untap it straight away. Same thing goes with the Sage of Latinam. So Ishan having three cards in hand. I mean, we're all kind of stuck with the big difference is that I've got two pingers and I've got the Time Elemental. And there we see Marco untap. Ooh, he's going to tap a lot of mana. What are we going to see? Are we going to see an Elder Landworm? That would be cool. Tapping seven. Oh, Elder Landworm. There is it. I called it. A 5-5. Five, five. Is it Trample, I believe? And you cannot attack with it unless um, it's been dealt damage. I think. Or was it? Or, or does it have to block something? Oh, look at this Time Elemental. Sending back the clone to my hand. That means I'm going to lose the Wanderlust. That's actually good news for me. I guess I can play it out as another pirate ship. I would just have an extra pinger. That would be quite nice. Again, counting all the mana. So Ishan's on 11. Marco's on 9. I'm also on 11. I think I just have to be patient. It's not the most spectacular thing to do, but yeah, maybe just clone the pirate ship right now. Ooh, playing a Triskelion of my own. So we saw that earlier. Uh, we saw Marco trying to cast one, and I played that Spellblast, I believe. Playing a clone on the, on the Triskelion. Okay, this is interesting. Now, every time I take a counter off the Trike, Ishan's actually going to gain a life because of his Power Leech, because it's zero, remove a counter, deal a damage. So it's an activated ability. That is pretty huge. It looks like I'm passing turn here. Probably want to use all those counters in end step. But I'm getting really, really close to killing Marco here. And Ishan also just passing turn, by the way. So we're already at Marco's turn here. So the turns are going a little bit quicker. Uh, maybe players are waiting for a couple of cards in their decks that can save them out of this, uh, this uh, situation. But, I mean, it's, it's really tough because 
You know, Ishan's got a maze and tons of creatures. Marco's got a maze and tons of creatures. And also, he's got a Diamond Valley. So it's just super difficult for me to to kill them quick. It's just something that goes extremely slow at the moment. And it looks like Marco is just really in the tank here. Tapping four, he's going to cast Navanerl's Disc again. So that's a disc I sent back earlier, and then there was just that fog by Ishan. Marco tapping five. Okay, there's the Martyrs of Corliss. In response to him casting the Martyrs, I'm going to deal six damage to Marco. So he's going to drop to three life. The reason I'm doing it in response is because Corliss is kind of a bodyguard for artifact damage. So Corliss would soak up all the damage that I do with, uh, with the trikes. And this means, I believe, that Ishan is gaining 6 life. I kind of remember this in the game. And actually, we, we looked it up, what the current Oracle text is. So here we see the life total change of Marco. So he's all the way down to 3 this is huge. He really needs to start using the Diamond Valley. I can also ping him for two, put him on one. And remember, I think Ishan still needs to gain six life. So pinging him, he's going to go to one, sending back my trike. And now untapping everything. Ooh, I think Marco's dead, to be honest. There's not much he can do. Tapping six again, recasting my trike. Well, actually, the trike damage is going to be soaked up by the martyrs, right? So that's not going to do it. I can also use my time elemental to send back the diamond valley. And then in response, Marco wants to use it. And in response, I can ping him to death. It looks like I want to use my Triskelion here to kill Marco, but that would be kind of a mistake because of the Martyrs of Corliss. I believe they would soak up the damage. I think Ishan is now kind of looking at that rule, like if he's gaining life from the Trikes. I, I think he is. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So there he goes, 6 life up to 17. Oh, Old Man of the Sea. I'm finding pretty good cards here. So with Old Man of the Sea, I can take control of some creatures. The Living Wall, for example, I could take control of with the Old Man. Oh, that would be so funny. Anyway, I think I'm going to try to kill Marco here. Let's see if Marco has a trick up his sleeve to try to survive it. And I kind of remember this. You have to understand, we've been playing for such a long time that, that we're, we're playing pretty slow. And I remember we were discussing and debating. And look at this. I'm just passing turn. I guess I want to do it in Marco's end step. And, and maybe that's better. Let's first see if Ishan can still do something. Yeah, I think I killed at Birds of Paradise a while ago, Ishan. I'm not sure when, but I think it was a turn when I also killed the Mesa Pegasus. Anyway, we see Marco. Yeah, now Marco is using the Diamond Valley. So in response, he's going to go to six, but I'm saying in response, I want to kill you. So he's using the Diamond Valley. Then in, in response, I'm going to ping him. So before he gains the life from the Diamond Valley, he's actually going to take the damage from the Tim. So I think Marco's dead right now. You can, you can kind of, I think Marco is like, oh man, that was not smart. So he's trying to figure out a way out of this. He's saying, can I take it back? I'm saying, sure. Can you do anything else? So he's drawing a card for turn. That does mean that he's not on six though, but that he's on one again. So he needs to put the dice back on one. Yeah, exactly. So he's now back on one, and we're now kind of discussing, is there a way for Marco <laughs> to survive this? I don't think there is. 
I mean, one of the things he can do is wait for me to ping him. Then he can activate his Diamond Valley, but he also have the Pirate Ship, so I can use the Pirate Ship and kill him with that. So there's not really a way out of it. So he's playing a Preacher now. I can actually steal the Preacher with my, my uh, Old Man of the Sea next turn if I want to. I don't know why I would want to, but... So we're kind of discussing the scenarios right now. Like, is there a way for Marco to survive? I believe the answer is no. I mean, not knowing what Marco has in hand, of course, maybe there is a card that can change the situation for him, but I doubt it. So on the end step, I'm going to ping Marco for one. Marco wants to respond. And I'm saying, well, if you want to sack something, I can simply tap. So he's saying I want to use my Diamond Valley. In response, I'm going to use my Pirate Ship. And then, of course, I can still shoot him with the trikes, but actually he's got a reverse damage. I think what we forgot here is that Marco still has the Martyrs of Corliss, but then, of course, I could use my Time Elemental to send back his Martyrs of Corliss and then deal damage with him with the trikes, so kind of keeping priority in my response. So I think for Marco, there's really no way of surviving this, and I think that's it. This is it for Marco. I think the thing that he could have done, I guess, I mean, looking back at this game, it's easy. Trust me, we were playing for hours on end, right? We were not sharp at this point anymore. But uh, looking back at it at it right now, uh, really focusing on gameplay, I, I think if he used maybe the Diamond Valley a bit earlier in the game to pump his life, that would have been better. Uh, but again, it's really easy to say that from hindsight. And of course, me having the pingers and the time elemental makes a huge difference. So now all I have to do, well, all I have to do, but now I can focus fully on Ishan. And uh, I use my, my time elemental to send back my clone. I'm recasting my clone, copying my pirate ship. So I've got three pingers. And of course, I'm also looking at the amount of creatures on the side of Ishan. It's actually not that many creatures. But I'm really worried about a potential Spore Cloud. So am I now using my Time Elemental, by the way? I'm not quite sure. I am tapping tons of mana, so I'm doing something. Oh, casting a huge Brain Geyser. Wow. This is truly kind of an overkill situation here. I still have six mana left. Remember, Time Elemental is four to use. Ooh, finding a Diamond Valley. Yeah, I think this game is pretty much over. Discarding a Temple. And it looks like after hours and hours of battling, it looks like I'm going to be victorious. It looks like I'm not there yet, though. So he's Sean having a mock showing it. He can't really play it out anymore because of the, the Titania song. And there you see me using my time elemental. What am I going to send back? I'm not sure why I'm sending back the Maze of If. I think that that's a bad decision, to be honest. I think I should have sent back his Gaze Avenger, like a big creature. Also pinging Ishan, of course. So he's going to drop to 16. And I'm going to cast Control Magic. Okay, so that's why I'm not sending back the Gaze Avenger. I'm probably going to steal it. Or am I going to steal... The Aladdin's Lamp, which is a 10-10. Maybe that's even better. Yeah, I'm stealing the lamp. Okay, that's pretty... That's huge. Am I going to go for an Alpha Strike? So counting the creatures on the side of Ishan. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven creatures. Yeah, I've got tons of creatures. I think that the thing here is not to get overconfident and attack with everything. Because if he's got a Spore Cloud... Or if I make a mistake in my calculations and he's going to survive this attack, he, he may even win this. Remember, I am on 11. It's kind of hard to see my life total there, but I am pretty low, right? So if I make a mistake, also remember, because of the power leech, he's going to gain a life for every attacking creature. Wow, playing a Vesuvan Doubleganger, copying the Tim, I guess. So I've got four pingers right now. That's pretty huge as well. I'm going to use my Time Elemental to send back his Gaius Avenger. And now I'm going to attack. Look at that. So attacking with a 9-9, a 6-6 Book of Wrath. 
a 5-5 Ring of Renewal, a 5-5 The Hive, a 4-4 Knowledge Vault, a 4-4 Icy Manipulator, and a 4-4 Never Knows Disc. I think he can still survive this. So he's first going to take the life because I'm tapping all those artifacts. So he's still going to take the life. And I'm going to make it really difficult on Ishanir. I think if he wants to survive, he's going to make some... Uh, some bad blocks, but I mean, it's better than dying. So let's let's just kind of, you know, listen to this block in, in, in real life and see how we are going to figure this out. Oof. It's um, yeah, it, man, it's your enchantment. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, no, the 9-9 nine, nine actually is the toughest. So I think I'm gonna have to block like the the nine nine, right? I don't know how much yeah. how much total is that left. So I've got four. Like I've got. I think I'm gonna die anyway. Yeah, what you've got left now is eight, twenty three, twenty nine damage. Yeah. Okay. So that seems doable. You can do it. I think. I think yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I'll. Do you want to the colossus? Okay. I would ignore the, the colossus and try to kill the other stuff. Oh, you think I should kill the others? Yeah, well, because but this, they're all this bigger anyway. Trample. Yeah. They're all bigger anyway. Um, yeah, true. I will take less damage. Right, so two on the boot of brass. Uh, actually, yeah, two on the boot of brass. You want to double block the book? Yeah, why not? Okay. I'm gonna kill your rot of ruin, and then there's two damage on the on the book. Yeah, so you're gonna kill my book, right? Maybe I don't and know. I'm gonna also double block the uh, the the gauntlet of chaos. Okay, uh, I'm gonna kill your uh, icy, and then. Uh, what do I have left there? The nine and then five. These four are left still. Oh, and the nine, nine, yeah. Yeah, that's a, uh, a huge amount. So these were blocked already. Um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to... Oh, this one also blocked. Yeah, but your, your disc hasn't yet. Yeah, only the disc. So I'll block disc with disc. disc. And then how much is left? So it's four, six, Fine. Yeah, that's gonna kill me anyway. I think. That's uh, 23 damage. Um, yeah, I think I'm dead then. And then you ping me. Yeah, so I can't actually do it. I have to sacrifice everything and not double no, block. Not double block. Yeah. You want to go? But yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, I guess I'll do it. So yeah, bring everything back. I'll just. So we'll ignore the 99 trampler. Then you want to block the five fives, right? So that's the Hive, Ring of Renewal, and Gauntlet? Yeah. Uh, I mean, these ones were all back, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I can block six. So, um, yeah, I'll just sacrifice everything, pretty much. I mean, I, I'll block the, the Icy with this one, oh. so this one stays, but okay. then all the rest are gone. Are gone and then we have to see so for example so the five five you block you block all the five fives i block all the five fives okay so they stay alive and you lose three artifacts oh and i block the book of rust because that's a six six so replace them oh yeah where so it's one two three four five blockers oh here's the book yeah i i have one two three four five blockers right so yeah so you block the book the icy you block on that thing, right? Uh, oh, the book stays alive then. Then you lose your four four. Yeah, I lose a four four like the icy. Uh, and then you do have three five fives that you block on four four, so they also die. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then there are two four fours left. And you block. And you I'm block gonna one. block one of them with this, and it also dies. And I assume the disc. So then you take four. No, no, it doesn't die because it's a three. Actually, yeah, no, makes sense. I'm gonna block it with a four and it dies as well. 
So I'm taking the nine and the four. So you take 13 damage in total? Yeah. And then I can kill your ring by picking it with one. Uh... Yeah, I think I'm toast. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's your turn. Yeah, but you still survived though. I should have attacked with everything. But I, I was afraid for the fog effect. And we are back. So I hope you understand why I kind of let you listen into our conversation. Man, that was a complicated attack. And, and like I said, I was afraid for the fog effect. So here we see Ishan kind of rebuilding his board. But I don't think it's really going to matter much. But uh, so he's recasting his Avenger. He's going to count how big it is. So it's actually a 10-10 still pretty big. So I'm going to ping him. He's going to go to 9. Let's listen in on how I'm actually going to end this game or try to end this game. You're just attacking with everything. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, right. You've got how many blockers now? One, um, two, three, four. Yeah, so I'll use my time elemental. Oh, sorry. Only three. Only three. Yeah, I'll use yeah. my time elemental to send back your Gaius Avenger. Right, and then I'll uh, attack. Yeah, and then we win. Go, Timmy! Timmy is to the build to the win. <laughs> Only if I play Place of Glory. <laughs> uh, what a game, man! <laughs> oh, that was insane. I knew when that Titania song. I hit the board, I like, okay, I can do something with this. I can do something with this. You know, having my Sage of Latinam, having a lot of artifacts in my deck, I knew I could kind of start sacking them, drawing more cards than my opponent, and I don't have to worry anymore for Neverrolls Discs. That was pretty good. Um, but despite that, my, my opponents were still gaining life. Um, we're still finding ways to stay alive. I mean, the Maces of Ith are just a pain to play against. There were also so many ground creatures on both sides on the table so I needed my flyers and then I kind of lost that flyer that air elemental in the Danzig scimitar um, adventure attack that was just stupid um, you know so it, it, it was difficult but it's definitely a good feeling that I'm, I'm floating on top at the end of it um, it's not all about winning obviously just seeing these cool cards is, is worth this format it's, it's like it's a lot of fun you know that's why you play it because you want to play out certain cards and for me what I liked the most actually was that my uh, time elemental played a pretty big role and that's typical one of those cards that I always call it a win more card like if you're behind you don't want to draw into it if you're already winning or you already have a lock with your deck it's great but in one-on-one -on -one, it's usually just way too slow to have an impact on the board and now you can see with this format it's like wow you got a time elemental that's a big problem like everybody was like oh no it's the worst card ever so that was like yeah really funny to see anyway um this was the episode i'm sure i've made a ton of mistakes i'm sure the people i played with made a ton of mistakes so please um yeah be nice let us know what we could have done better i always want to learn but uh yeah, be, be nice about it, you know, don't be, uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, a big uh, thank you to Chris, to Ishan, and to Marco for playing. Maybe it's nice to know that we're all from different countries, and I think it's great that, uh, that the online and the online community that we have of old school is kind of, you know, bringing countries together, you know. Can I make it big? I'm going to make it big. Who cares? So it's really nice. Chris is from Germany. Uh, Marco is from Italy, living in, uh, in London, by the way. And uh, let me think, Ishan, he's from Israel, and I'm, of course, from the Netherlands here in Amsterdam, sending out my, uh, my love to all of you guys and my videos to all of you. Um, talking about love and videos and all that stuff, if you like what you see, if you enjoy the videos that I make, if you like Timmy Talks, please support the channel by liking, uh, sharing, and commenting. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hit that bell. So there's a cool animation right now, isn't there? Anyway, um, what else is there? Oh, of course, I keep forgetting. I have a Patreon page. So if you want to help me get like equipment like this, uh, maybe get a better camera, get a good setup, I would love to kind of make uh, a really like real life EDH video with like quality setup. 
So it would be great if you join my Patreon program. I can use uh, the funding, the sponsorship from you uh, to kind of co-fund that equipment. So that would be fantastic. How can you become a patron? It's quite simple. There's probably an info card popping up right now. Click on that info card that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can already support me, uh, my channel with $1 a month. So it's it's kind of nothing. So if you can miss it, I know for some it's, it's a lot, but if you can miss it, please have a look. I would really appreciate it. And one of the cool perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazink.